Well, with more on the ENSACOP report, we're now joined by the Green Party leader, Elizabeth May. Ms. May, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Michael. Listen, I think it's fair to say that Canadians are left scratching their heads, wondering how you and Mr. Singh could have come out with such different conclusions. But, but you say that really the, the conclusions aren't vastly different. Can you explain that? No. Well, I mean, I think it's a tone of voice. There's a difference in tone of voice. Mr. Singh said, I'm, I'm more upset now than I was before. And I said, I'm really relieved. Okay, so what was on my mind when I started reading the report? Are there MPs currently serving in Parliament? who could be described as having taken action against Canada that borders on treason or that might be actually treason. I read the full unredacted report and I'm relieved. Now, I don't know what Mr. Singh had on his mind when he went in to read the report. He came out and said, I'm more upset than I was before. <laughs> so that's a very subjective commentary. And I can't say in any way that that's a contradiction. I am not saying that there's no concern about foreign interference. On the contrary, I'm saying we need to act urgently to deal with an increasing problem of foreign governments interfering in Canadian affairs, undermining our democracy. Buttressing our democracy through action is where I want to put our attention as parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. That means that I think we should quell what I, having read the report, think is unproductive and not justified by the intelligence effort to try to get out the names of people who might be traitors, because I, reading the report, current members of parliament don't fit that at all. There's one example, as I've said before, of a former member of parliament where I want an investigation, and I think if the intelligence holds up as evidence, there should be a prosecution. But that's one unique case and doesn't apply to current members of parliament okay. in the, at, at all. Does not apply to current members, but Mr. Singh did use the word traitor. That's such a strong conclusion uh, than the one you reached. Well, they clarified from his office, and I think this is really important. I, th I think the clarification from the NDP leader's office didn't receive as much media attention as perhaps a misinterpretation of what he was saying. His clarification from his office was that he was not at all confirming or suggesting or denying that there are current members of parliament who, uh, to whom he was referring with the word traitors. So uh, we agree that there was at least, a, and I see evidence of only one former parliamentarian that I would consider did things that were the actions of a traitor. Again, if in intelligence isn't evidence and we always have to give a benefit of the doubt in any, and also the uh, presumption of innocence is deeply ingrained in our systems of justice in this country. That said, I don't think Mr. Singh said anything differently than what I said, except in terms of tone of voice and emphasis emotionally, not on the facts. You know, Mr. Singh uh, did uh, also, though, criticize the Prime Minister for not acting sooner. In fact, he said the Prime Minister has concluded that foreign interference is acceptable at some level. Do you draw the same conclusion? No, and I, th I think questions should go to the Prime Minister or back to Mr. Singh on that one. I, 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 don't, I don't agree with that conclusion. And uh, there are, there are, there's a larger context here that you get when you read the whole report. Uh, the committee does say they wish the Prime Minister's office had acted more quickly on their recommendations. I can agree with the committee. On the other hand, when you read the whole context, you know, as a Prime Minister is receiving different reports from different agencies, uh, that report to the Prime Minister, including uh, our, our Foreign Diplomatic Service and their Global Affairs Canada, who have a different set of considerations and a different lens on what diplomats can do overseas, because our diplomats have to be able to act in foreign capitals and interact with other societies to advance Canada's interests. So there's a lot to be considered here, and I'm trying to keep to a place, believe it or not, as leader of a federal political party, I want to try to stay nonpartisan on this issue so we can unite and have a collaborative effort to give a very clear message to foreign governments that you can't interfere in Canadian democracy. Tighten up our rules, tighten up the way we act as, as members of parliament, and also look at the rules at provincial capitals and in municipal elections. All aspects of society need to take the threat of foreign interference very seriously and take action against it. 
Okay, I, I hear your, your, your call here to, to be more collaborative, but you know, Mr. Polyev still has not signed the documents necessary in order to get access to the unredacted report. What do you make of that? Well, I, I note that uh, keeping nonpartisan, I was surprised that D Tom Mulcair, as former leader of the NDP, supports Mr. Polyev in this, and that no leader should read the report, says Mr. Mulcair. I don't understand that, but I think, I think all of us as elected people will do a better job with more information rather than less information. But I, I leave that to Mr. Poiliev to explain. I, I remain in hope that like, your, like Mr. Blanchet, who initially said he wouldn't seek top secret security clearance and then did, I hope Mr. Poiliev will change his mind and obtain it as well. Do you think ENSICOP should have released this report in a different way? Because at this point we have more questions than answers because the reaction, first you, then Mr. Singh, a, has led to questions. Should this have been handled differently, do you think? Well, I think the reaction, let's start with the reaction before I read it, before Mr. Singh read it, which was that for, for national media reading the public available report, there were enough details that appeared to suggest that maybe, just maybe, there were parliamentarians who had violated our oath of office which, and swearing allegiance to Canada. I hope that by reading the report and sharing with Canadians my conviction uh, based on the knowledge and the context of being able to read the full unredacted report that members of parliament who are prepared to work for other governments instead of Canada share information uh, that is uh, contrary to Canada's national interest those people are not serving with me in Parliament. I'm very relieved and I want to share that with Canadians. So uh, how the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians disclosed their work is up to them. I have nothing but respect and admiration for the Herculean job they did in going through 33,000 pages of top secret information and trying to share with Canadians that we do have a problem in Canada, that foreign governments are increasingly targeting our society, our elections, our internal nomination processes, our leadership races, not only that, targeting journalists, political staffers, um, community organizations. I, I think all of Canadian society needs to realize the world has shifted uh, quite a bit to where we can realize that governments, whether um, the People's Republic of China or India, uh, are, are actually interested in our domestic affairs and interfere and want to interfere in them. And that's something we can all take and we all should take very seriously. And our job as parliamentarians is to act to protect our democracy. So where does it go from here then, Ms. May? For, in an ideal world, if you could dictate where it goes, because on the, there seems to be two levels here. One is the reaction to the report from political leaders, and two is the foreign interference itself. So where do you want to see this go? I want to see us have, and I, the, in the words of the uh, chair of the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, David McGinty, he said, look, we should have the opportunity to have an adult conversation that starts with, as far as I'm concerned, the, the work the committee did is extraordinary. They, all of them as parliamentarians, uh, both House of Commons, members of parliament and senators from almost every party, the Greens weren't invited on the committee, but that's not a, a criticism. I'm just saying they've got the bloc, the conservatives, the liberals, New Democrats and independent senators, members of parliament together on a committee capable of writing a report to Canadians with a public version and then a more secret version with more intelligence in it is accessible to MPs, party leaders who seek top secret security clearance. That's impressive. That's a lot of work. I want to work with that committee. I want to accept the um, the notion, which I'm also putting forward, and I'll be codified. I haven't put, written it down. I've said it in a couple of press conferences. And runs. I really ought to write a letter to all my colleagues who are leaders of the other federal political parties and say, please, get your top secret security clearance. Let's all have read the report because dueling press conferences aren't going to help sort this out. If we could sit down together in a secure location where we didn't risk divulging any of the material that we read that's top secret, I think we could come up with an action plan to protect Canada's democracy from foreign interference. The national, the committee has already made a number of recommendations. We need to, I think, work together and set partisanship aside, put Canada first and give Canadians an assurance 
that we are acting to push back on foreign interference in Canada. Elizabeth May, I appreciate the time. Thank you for this. Thank you very much, Michael.